Peace and power, man. We chilling, man. We vibrating. The vibe is real. The tribe is real. We tribing up. Peace to the tribe. A hop to the tribe, man. Devouring chaos. Collectively. All the all you seeing is a collective mind, a collective organism, man. We we enjoying the flow, man. Love to the tribe, man. I was gonna get some sleep, man. I was almost off the hook. And right when we was ending our powwow. Uno come up and be like, man, you know what I mean? You know, in that, uh, in that American Holocaust book, man, when he was digging on the Aztecs, and I said, oh, damn. Because then it hit me instantly. You know, that, that word, that sound hits that Ruach, and it's like, man, you know, it would be pretty pretty cool drop, man, if you kind of read read a chapter of American Holocaust, man, and, and dug on it with, with the people, man, enjoyed the Sabbath, beautiful Shabbat Shalom to the family. I know you're about to go into your Shabbat. I mean, so uh, keep that vibration going, man. Love to the real ones, man. Love to the family everywhere, man. Keep talking to your family. Keep connecting to the family around you. You know what I'm saying? You might not be vibing with certain whatever, but, you know, just keep yourself, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Just glowing, man. Just keep glowing. I mean, let that redemption be inside of you, man. That, when you know that it's your time because it's always been you and time is just you know their own perception of it so it's just you <laughs> welcome back because when it's you the game changes you know what i'm saying the the energy the the flow the wave and all praise wow wow man that we got a wave to surf man that no matter if you agree or not, man, you could at least walk down the path with us, man, and kick it and be like, I see where y'all getting at, though. I mean, I don't really mess with it because, you know, I'm over here, but, I mean, I, I do see how you connected that with that. And that's kind of interesting about this Kalelus and this Sylvanus told Texas and this, you know, Bravo and, and, and Ogam and how this connects to the Roosters and Theodore Roosters and the splitting of the Solomon joint. And, man, love the natural by law, man. Get that last drop. Man, go, if you ain't in that classroom, if you ain't in the classroom of the tribe, man, if you ain't in teacher's classroom, man, Hiram's classroom, get to the root of it all, you already know, if you ain't in these classrooms, man, you got to be all up in it, get in AD's classroom, man, we're going to keep dropping the drop, man, and love to y'all, it, it, it's a real manifestation, man, peace to uh, medicine, man, shit, man, you know, Ab the legend, you know what I'm saying? All the folks, man, uh, Tyrone Street, all the folks, man, uh, Isaac Ford, man, tuning in, all this information coming in one place. You see, I can't even contain it. Get in Paco's classroom or you crazy. And it keeps growing. Jonathan Johnson, man, love to my friend. Good friend, man. He's a friend. You know what I mean? It's Jonathan Johnson, man. That's all I got. Subscribe to Jonathan Johnson. I left y'all the link on the last video. Subscribe to Jonathan Johnson, man. These are friends. You know what I'm saying? These are more than than this. You know, it, it's an energy of friendship. We've been friends for a long time, all of us. You know what I'm saying? So, we, patience is of a virtue as we dig on these things. We've been, you know, knocked upside the head. We're kind of getting it back spurt by spurt. It's not about, oh, this translation is this. Or that translation is that. Man, we start tripping on translations. You know, we sound pretty, you know, we sound pretty ignorant, not knowing anything, you know, uh, you know, getting at each other's throats about technicalities of, of, of how you pronounce and what's the purest this and what's the this. We got to be humble. You know what I'm saying? We got to defeat our ego. All right. That's the last step of the game for all your junk DNA to crystallize and to form and to be your actual essence, your actual vibration. I mean, that's what you wait for. You're tired of this illusion because it's an illusion. You got no vibration. And it's an illusion. You're getting sucked on. You know what I mean? All your vibration is getting sucked out of you. And it's going towards making everyone else rich. And every time you try to, you know, do better than that, you get your legs cut off because you're playing someone else's game. You're in their mind. In reality, you're walking around kings of your kingdom. Gods amongst men. Frequency above the barrier. They're looking at you like you're extraterrestrials and you don't get it. You are extraterrestrial. 
You are more. You, you extend throughout all the territory. Throughout this what they call the middle earth. This terrestrial. You extend far outside these borders and boundaries, man. You're just going through, you know what I'm saying, a real good tune-up. And everyone has been waiting for this to come to fruition. This is the tune-up of tune-ups. This is the, you know, charge-up of charge-ups, man. We charging all the way up. We, we charging all the way up, man. We, we, we feeling the brilliance of our creator, man. The, the full, you know, fruition, the ruach, the design. There is no, you know what I mean, this is left, this is right, you were this, and this is numbers, and numbers that, and all the, all the, you know what I'm saying, two-dimensional, three-dimensional shit's out the window. There is no separation. No matter how much we try to distinguish this, we have no separation in reality. Every bit of what you think that you're separate from me is illusory. It's an illusion. We are not separate, which is why we're on the same way. And don't resist it. Don't resist the, you know what I'm saying, enjoyment of reading books, man, when you never liked to read before until you realize you are the book. Everything is written about some aspect of you that you can pull out and extract from and put yourself back together again because Humpty Dumpty fell off the wall, you know. You know what I'm saying? Humpty Dumpty got put in the, you know what I'm saying? You know the story. Y'all recon that story, Humpty Dumpty, and tell me that ain't about you. But now you put yourself back together again, all the kings, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. So yeah, man, love, man. I want to drop some of these comments, man, because y'all be dropping wonderful comments. I try to get back. Sometimes it takes me a minute, you know. But I love y'all. Y'all already know, man. We're building up these sites, man. We're building up these sites. We're doing our thing. We're having powwows, chasing babies around the house. Then, finally, you know, you get it couple minutes we gotta catch up on drop because the tribe be dropping the drop then we got the copper thread nothing but links in that then the emails got a lot of links so we trying to catch up to that then i still got to catch up to these books and we still putting more pdfs in the new drop library man hawa hawa over 130 pdfs man let's get to 200 let's get to 200 we get to 200 pdfs we're gonna have like a special drop party or something man we're gonna do some giveaways, do some, we're going to do something crazy when we get 200 books in our library. See, most people be like, man, when I get to 10,000 subscribers, I'm going to give away this. Cause they, nah, I'm, uh, when we get 200 books, downloadable. So if you're scrolling through the library, man, this is a challenge, man, from our reconners, everybody with those sticky fingers. If you scroll through the library... And you click on one of them links, and it ain't like download downloadable. It's like one of them Google Docs, or you know what I'm saying, those uh, like a link, but it's not an actual downloadable joint. We want the downloadable joints, man. So please help us out and see if you can find the PDF that we can download. You know, just stuff like that helps us flow. You know what I'm saying, so we can have all the have all the records and actually hold the joint. Love to Sufa. She says, "Love this drop king natural." Enough a hob to you. Natural by law. If y'all ain't got that last drop, man, we were digging on Tyree being main, the actual main, Mananan, connecting to the Danan or Dan tribes. So now you have the tribes of Dan in Maine. <laughs> this is, you know what I'm saying? This is the 700s and stuff. This is the forbidden histories of America. This, this is the forbidden stuff that's not taught. You're not taught about the 700s in America, about the promised land, Kalelus, about how we cool, about the knights that were fighting for your promised land here in 700s with their magic swords. So anyway, you know, I'm just saying, dig on it. And yeah, you know, so we all, you know, flowing. Like as we get back to the Press the Giants, it's going to be so much fun to tie on, you know, all the things that we picked up along the way, man, so natural, get in that classroom of natural by law, get in the classroom of all the tribe that's really putting out immense energy, man, for you, I mean, this is what, <laughs> you see all these, you know, sisters and brothers doing this for you, man, Miss D and the Copper Color Awakening, love to all the sisters that's dropping this drop, dry bones rising, all right? 
Get it, man. Get it. So, so far, this drop came natural, man. So, y'all dig on natural by law with this Tyree and Maine and everything else is kicking, man. We get into Giants and all kinds of stuff. Uh, Tiona Khan says, uh, now why Baton Rouge literally means red stick and the official place is located according to Indian research is on the bank of the Mississippi River at a place called Scott's Bluff, right in the middle of one of the oldest HBCUs. We're talking about the black colleges in America, Southern University AM. So we got this red stick, and we're just talking about this migration of our people. We're talking about the Cholula Mounds and Monk's Mound. We're talking about Louisiana. All right. And uh, yeah, my sister said, uh, not only that, many of the roads in the surrounding areas leading up to it are names of indigenous tribes and names, i.e. Choctaw, Seneca, Hiawatha, Hawatha, Iroqui or Iroquois, Chippewa. Wow. And there are and there are earthen mounds everywhere you look out here, it's all coming together, great drop. Man, great drop. Tione. Love to you, a hob to you. That's beautiful, man. See, this is what I'm talking about. Now I start sparking something to me where, you know, I'm going to start digging on something else to do with this red stick again because we were talking about the migrations before. So that's what I'm talking about, man. That's what I'm talking about. Tiona. Tione. Um, my man, uh, Harold Kirkendall said, you dropped it with the proof out in front. That's the real deal. That's why we got all these books, man. Because you ain't got to take our word or surf this way because we're saying so we're just we're going to provide you exactly what we're looking at so you at least know that hey you could throw out this researcher's research and this researcher's theory all day long but we can also throw out your researcher's research and theory so you're going to have to respect it and we can only respect wherever you're coming because you got whatever but the way it's connecting it's a whole other thing it's not just about research and theory it's about the connection and when it connects to the indigenous truth, and it connects to your law, your vibration, and that connects to your orientation of, of not spinning, <laughs> and that connects to the frequency, the 4 plus 3 plus 2, that's been our foundation from the top. All praise to why, man. That's been the, the uh, you know, purified substance. That's been the drop, man. So, and uh, my, my uh, fam, Tione, also says, natural by law, be on it for real, man. I told y'all, man. Natural by law, just, you know, just another young gunner, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, so many of the young gunners like Jay Stu, Howard Stu, Pop Gold, CJ Battle, Teach. I mean, you know, just <laughs> straight slayers, man. Just really came, you know what I'm saying, for the absolute skinny, no fat. They don't want no fat. They want just the skinny, cut to it. Hijacking, you know what I'm saying, cutting off all the bullshit. You know what I mean? Any hijack. Is out of here, man, because of this energy. There is no hijack. There is no frequent, no a hijack frequency in this particular wave. This wave is hijack free. I mean, it's all about vibration. When we drop like the whole Cointel drop and all that, it's, you know what I'm saying? The, the big difference between then and now and all that is the frequency. The vibration is felt. You know what I'm saying? You, you know your tribe when you feel them. You know what I'm saying? And you know, that's the feeling that we're continually, continuously working on. We ain't got it perfect yet. We just got to do what's best for us, for, you know what I mean, our families, you know, like everything that we know how to do, man. This ain't rocket, you know what I mean? We're doing the best we can, but what's the best for your family? It's the best for your family, raising them in an illusion, raising them as a homeborn slave, raising them with no land, raising them thinking they come from a whole other land, and that that's the old world when you're in the old world and Egypt is here. Are you going to raise them? You know, are you afraid of them being called crazy when they say, man, I ain't on no spinning ball, fool? Why do I see the sun and the moon every day, three o'clock in the sky together? Everybody see the same sun and the moon, catty corner, right next to each other. What's on the other side of your ball? You have no moon, no sun on the other side of your ball? Because at three o'clock in L.A., I got them both. And I'm saying that they're over us both at the same time. There is no other side of the ball. 
We all see up, up. The up to you is the up to me. You don't have a different up than me. You don't have a different up. And you don't have a different down. We have the same orientation. We just been brainwashed, man. And that's what we're talking about, man. So natural by law. We on it for real. Man, peace and power, man. Urban Reed, man, been doing belly flops, man, and, and drop marathons, man. Just uh, leaving great comments on so many videos, man. And it's, I appreciate you, bro, because I really do read them. And, you know what I'm saying? I write it down, man. I write it down, man. So, and uh, love, man. Uh, you know what I'm saying? For the shirts, man. Bro, just copped a couple shirts, man. So, I love you, man. appreciate um, You know what I'm saying? He said, now add this to the mix, wasn't it? The cap the Khalifa drop, so we're talking about the Khalifa drop, that talked about the turquoise, and we're talking turquoise, we're talking turquoise, remember that, and then the Estevanico drop, with the cities of gold, and how he tried to go up in New Mexico, or how we cool, which is also promised land, Kalelus, and he was trying to get him for the turquoises, so he was a moor from Morocco, Estevanico the moor, and they say he was the first non-native to enter that land. We're just talking the Four Corners people. So even though he came from so-called Africa or Morocco, um, you know what I mean? He was the first that they were using to infiltrate. And behind him came more, more from Morocco coming to infiltrate these people here. In these four corners, what they call how we cool, and he was coming asking for turquoises. He was trying to get their women, and they killed him. So the story goes, he was killed in how we cool, the first non-native to enter how we cool. Now it's just vibration, it, it's respect, it's vibration. So we're talking turquoise. So my bro, uh, Urban Reed says, check this out. Go to Google Images and look up turquoise. And then weathered copper. Y'all want to take this uh, Urban Reed challenge? Let's do it, man. You know, I ain't got a laptop up here for nothing. <laughs> you know, we surfed the way, man. This is what we do. I mean, how else would I think to Google turquoise? Like, what do you say? Let me back it up. You know, I don't follow instructions very well sometimes. All right, he says, go to Google Images. Uh, let's start with that. And then he said, look up turquoise. All right, so first let's look up turquoise. It's, it comes in steps sometimes. You can't start at step two when it's a step one. So we're going to look up turquoise. Uh, images, all right. Uh-huh, okay. Let's see what we got. Y'all got that? See if we can get it closer. All right. Hope my phone don't drop. All right, let's see. So this is turquoise, like the brother said. Check out the church going. Right, now we're going to look up weathered copper. Is he getting to what I think he's getting to? Uh, let me dig on it. Weathered copper. Okay, my brother. Okay. He's going to lead us to the water. Gonna lead us to the water. <laughs> Weathered copper. Any questions? <laughs> so we're just talking about the colors. So you just saw the turquoise, and now you see weathered copper is also turquoise. Ah, so we're still talking copper is what my brother's saying. You know what I'm saying when we hear about these uh 
turquoise is, uh, you know what I'm saying, what's the big deal about turquoise? Who care about turquoise? Well, they're talking about copper. They're talking copper, which is energy, right? You can do a lot with energy, with pure water energy. So my brother says, now add this to the mix. Wasn't it the Khalifa drop? Remember, she loved turquoises and all that. That talked about the turquoise. Check this out. Go to Google Images. Look up turquoises and the weathered copper. I just did. It appears they didn't call us the copper colored race for free. <laughs> even that is a hijack code word. So even the turquoise is a hijack code word for copper color or copper color is a hijack for turquoise. Either way, we know we're talking about the same thing. So when you get to these turquoises, when you're reading all this drop, great drop, man. Drop Nation, man. Come on. Love to J-Hip. J-Hip surfing the wave so clean and cold. I appreciate your energy. Good fan, for real. Great, great wave, man. Every time you leave a comment, I appreciate it. He said, bring the records. Ah, oh, the records. Thank you, J-Hip. I wanted to talk records, man. I remember that drop with the uh, burial, Jacob burial. All right, he was buried in the cave of uh, Met, Met Peta, Met Peta, something like that, Mach Peta. They said that's in Hebron. Now Hebron, we're digging on it being in possibly Bolivia, possibly Memphis. But I digress. All right, Bolivia, C Central America. So he said, bring the records because in that drop. Before Jacob was able to be buried in that cave, Esau came, he cut him off. He said, nah, man, you can't be buried here. You got no rights. Jacob said, I ain't got no right. Look here, man. Look here, home slice. You trying to say that? Well, you know, Jacob was passed, but his sons was like, you know, the 12 sons. You know what I mean? What you talking about, man? Joseph stood up, you know, went to Esau and said, look, man. What was them words that came out of your mouth? Smooth, Tony? And Esau said, man, you can't bury your dad here because he ain't got no rights here. And Joseph said, what do you mean? You saying that Jacob don't have the rights? Jacob bought the rights. That's in the records. And Esau said, well, show me the records. So then, you know, Naphtali ran and said he ran faster than any, any stag, any animal could run. He ran so fast that he didn't even bend the glades of grass, according to the book of Jashar, chapter 56. You dig on it, you know, we dropped it. He got the records from, you know, Egypt and brought them back. And it had at least four different records. It's the Abraham buying the land, Jacob buying the land. Now, where are these records? Where are these records? Are they buried in the same cave? Are they in the same cave that Abraham and, and uh, Sarah, you know what I mean, and Jacob, and Leah, are they all? Isaac is the records buried with him because remember he had to go to Egypt to get the records. So did he end up storing the records right there in that cave? And is that in Bolivia or is that in Memphis? And my man Jay Hip said, bring the records. Hawa, Israel, the truth will set us free. Yeah, man. These records are your land rights. These are the land deeds, man. Yeah, the creator gave us his land, and we also have the land deeds. That's further documentation for those that need to see it. Wisdom, knowledge, strength. Through your frequency, positive vibrations, we're riding on through. Hebron, pushing the Hebron. <laughs> Remember the Chevron drop. Chevy, Chevrolet, Chevron. Maso Manos, let's go. Yeah, King Drive, love on this drop. Like them all, great job. Jay Hit, man. Um, appreciate you, man. You know what I'm saying? All praise our creator because it's, it's so much fun. Even when you don't, even when you don't sleep for, four, for three or four days, you still don't look tired, do you? You still don't look tired. I'm, I'm going to get some sleep, man. You know, maybe the Shabbat Shalom get it. It's all good because I don't feel tired. Honestly, man, it's an energy. It's something about the energy, man, around 3 or 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning that just soothes me, man. So I just I just take that in. <laughs> nah, man, get y'all rest, man. Take y'all naps, man. Take y'all old man naps. 
<laughs> I love the silence, leave mine. Let's go. Star Blue said, thank you, bro. Good words. You spoke right there. That you are loved. That you are loved. You know. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, to you. All family, man. You know what I'm saying? All right, man. Let's get one more, man. Damon Brown said, wait. Exilarch was Solomon a part of the Babylonian exile? Didn't it say Second Solomon as in new temple builder reaching Jagonia, Jehonia, Jagoni, Jeconias? Spelled G J E C O N I A H this time. All right, well, what I can dig on from that, my bro, <laughs> is that these exiles. The timelines, as you know, the chronology, with the, you know, when you dig on the Anatoly Fedomenko, the, res the Russian researcher, we've been dropped off in different timelines. So when it comes to when this one exile was versus when this story took place versus when this, we are putting it back together in real time. So was Solomon part of the Babylonian exile? I mean, you know what I'm saying? We're talking about... <laughs> You're talking about recent times, man. This Babylonian exile could have easily taken place. Like the book of Daniel couldn't be written in, in the 1200s. Very simply, this unsealing could just be happening from this prophetic time in the 1200s. So much drop happened between 700s and 1200s and really up to the 1500s. And your story's been dropped in all of these timelines. And you're literally pulling them out, so... I could surf that wave, you know what I'm saying? I could surf the more traditional route, but that's a great question. And I think that's what we try to promote is these type of questions. Was Solomon a part of the Babylonian exile? And when we get back into Press of John, you'll see why we can connect these things. When you're talking about the David sauce playing the Babylonian exilarchs, the, the exilarchs of Babylon and Georgia, connect the Russia, connect the Russes, the Mazakas, the Turkeys, the Byzantines, when that starts connecting, then you can kind of put, you know what I'm saying, a few pieces of foundation down, enough to know that this is recent history. You know what I'm saying? To be able to really stand or, you know, really sit on that. You know what I mean? That this book of Daniel and everything it's talking about was not written in the B. No, there's no such thing as BCs. If there's no, if there's no hijack, if there's no JC, if they just brought you all this, if you're from here, and even... These Russian chronographers are saying that according to the astronomical signs and all that, that this, uh, you know, Jesus was supposed to be born with the Beth, star of Bethlehem and then all these other, you know, type of astronomical events going on. But they trace the actual astronomical events and the only time those particular events happened that they were mentioning about this star lining up and, and this eclipse that's going on or whatever the case you know, you dig on Anatoly Fenomenko, you know, and they're breaking down full chronology that this is all happening 1053 or 1054 of what they're calling AD. So even in the astronomical connections when they're trying to put together this birth of what they're calling Christ, which you know as a Mashiach, but what's a Mashiach? You have Joshua, a Mashiach. Now, if this birth of this Mashiach is happening not in 05 BC or whatever the case is, but in 1054, according to the astronomical connections of what they're getting at when you pull the babies out of that, then you say, well, which Joshua was born with this star and these signs? Who is the mark? Why is Kitsukul to wearing a robe full of crosses or a sign, a towel? A crossing, a crossing over, as he led his people to the promised land. Joshua leads his people to the promised land. He put it together, and you start getting the drop out of what was presented to you in English and published through their publications. You get the drop with the Quiche drop, with the Papa Bull drop, the Annals of the Cocha Quail drop. And you get the cross drop because you know you're just talking picto, and they can't hijack two sticks crossing signifying a crossing a crossing over a sign so which joshua was born 1054 or 1053 
And is that the birth of Kitsukoto, of Joshua? And what's really happening now in 1200s when we talk about the book of Daniel? How's that lining up? 1300s, all right? Now you have the Prester Johns or the King Davids popping up, 1300s, 1400s, and we're still looking for them in the 1500s, even in some documents. So the hijack is real. It's melanin, all melanin, because it's all melanin when you talk about tribal war and people wanting land, and, and the hijack is real. So we're starting to see through, you know what I'm saying, a hijack free lens, man, and ask the right questions like, was, you know, Solomon a part of the, was this Exilarch, the Solomon, Exilarch, David Sausman, Preston John, whatever you want to call it, you know, part of this Babylonian Exilarch, man, and Preston John series is coming back, man, to keep digging on that, man, love to the family, Kakam, Kakam, Kobar, Shal Israel, hope I'm saying that right, brother. Chacham, Kabar, Shal Israel. I'll be dropping a video soon from another source of the splitting of Israel and the migration out of South America. Much love to 432 and natural by law. That was just a great drive, man. We did a great salsa, man, a great tango, man, with uh, the frequency with the Tyree and Maine. And I'm telling y'all to dig on that natural by law classroom and make sure you, or you know what I'm saying, really, you know, subscribe and you got your notifications on to whatever the tribe is dropping because the creator, our frame, our shaper is really, you know what I'm saying, <laughs> turning up the frequency, the, the ultra high frequency in all of us right now. And, you know what I'm saying? We got to eat, keep eating better, man. Love to Uno, man. Like, man, put some pink Himalayan salt. Make sure you're doing that alkaline and up. Get that, you know what I'm saying? Keep, keep getting the minerals in, you know what I'm saying? So you can sustain that water, man. Uno, I mean, love to the family, man. Love to the family, man. All right, man, let's go. Let's go. Oh, yeah, I got to show y'all something. You know what I mean? Then we're going to start reading. You know, we'll see how much we can get through. You know what I mean? I'll show y'all a little something, man. I'm just going to show you. I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing. Because, you know, these people, these people, man, you know what I mean? You know, they got some haters, man. They be hating on them. Man. But, you know, you got the link, man. You know, if you ever want to dig on it. You ever want to dig on it? Yeah, man, you know. <laughs> Another classic drop, you know what I'm saying? You know. Of course, you know, with our perspective, we always want more. You know, but that's why we got to come out with our own music, man, and keep pushing our vibration, man. But click the link below if you want to hear this drop in 432 while it's still up. You know how that goes. You know what happened with the Kendrick drop. <laughs> we got to put that one back on there, man. We got to... Slide Kendrick Lamar back in the scene, man. So, yeah, man, go dig on that, man. That's just a little treat, man. Love the Isaac Ford, man. Keeping us tuned up. Keeping us wavy. You know what I'm saying? Love to all the family. Love to all the wives, man. You know what I mean? A lot of us got wives that, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm here. I'm here with you. I'm here with you at 1, 1 30 in the morning. You know what I mean? My wife is sacrificing that for you, man. So, love to Chef Candy. Y'all follow us, man, or you know what I'm saying, whatever the case, on Instagram, whatever you want to call it, and see Chef Candy's recipes, man, and just keep supporting her, because, you know, you guys are, you know, giving her the confidence, man, to to step in her shoes, man, so she needs that confidence as well, man, and, you know, I, I am a blessed brother, because, uh, you know what I'm saying, wifey put it down, wifey put it down, all right, and uh, love to everyone, man, dropping that drop. You already know, man. Love to Ronald Price, man, for your recent donation, man, with the uh, Drive Nation headed home, supporting the, our stool, supporting the family. Y'all hold up, man. Let me get my battery. Let me get my battery. My battery's charging, so y'all just vibrate to these uh, gangster, gangster flutes. And I'll be right back, man. Get my battery, man. Get me some more tea or something, man.
Wow. Hope your day's filled with choosing up excellence, man. It don't matter how much jab ups it is, no matter how many times, man, you feel like you fall short or whatever, man. Just make your next move your best move, man. You know what I'm saying? Keep your energy up. Don't get too hard on yourself, man. Enjoy your moments, man. Enjoy the moments, man. That's all you got. Just a couple moments. So we all got this is a couple moments, man, to dig on, you know. Let go. to Ronald Price dropping that drop on the family you know what I'm saying every bit of drop you drop allows us man just to feel good man to know okay man cool you know what I'm saying any of the tribe you know what I mean need to you know what I'm saying shake free at any point you know what I'm saying they ready whatever the emergency is you know what I'm saying whatever whatever it is so you know what I'm saying just to be almost at 4,000, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, so far we used 2,800 for, you know, all the, you know, scenarios, and, you know, last time we got on our own, we was able to get our land, on our land, you know what I'm saying, and, and get everything popping, and, you know, get Jay Stu out, man, and get everything, just get us all there, and make it pop, you know what I'm saying, because of you, man, and, <laughs> you know, this was our, you know what I'm saying, you know, just to get it done, just to get these things done. Just to get them back, you know what I'm saying? When before, without without your help, all the stuff would be postponed, and we still be waiting to, you know, get get all the emergencies and the essentials, you know what I'm saying? Connected in one place, you know. Now that we were able to make these connections, now we're in place to, you know what I'm saying? In, in a better place, you know what I'm saying? For the next step, man. So, you know, it doesn't always have to be, you know what I'm saying? Like we're so used to not being prepared so to be able to be proactive with this particular help right here there's going to be many more ways to you know what i'm saying be there and help man, and assist and everything you've been doing already but to have just a little bit of a pot trust me it goes a long long way because sometimes it's just the essentials and so far the essentials have been taken care of whenever we needed it because of whatever you're able to continue to you know what i'm saying uh you know put that water in so Right now, it's all we got. It's all we got. You know what I'm saying? Um, but it's a lot, and it's enough. And it's always going to be enough with the Creator. He's always going to give us exactly and enough. You know what I'm saying? We need the land. You know what I'm saying? We, <laughs> you know, dug deep in our pockets, and we got enough. You know what I'm saying? And these essentials that you're helping with, we always have enough. And, you know, to build on the platform, man, that's being established in this miraculous fashion. All we got to do is build on it now. To have the land, now we can just build on it in our own time. It's not like, oh, shit, get lost, go. You know, it's just like, man, you know, we make pilgrimages, you know what I'm saying? We're able to go there, give our land some love. And it's so dope because you give the land love, you know what I'm saying, that a hop, and then, you know what I'm saying, you leave it there. You know what I'm saying? Like, you might come back. After all that giving, you, know, you might feel depleted, you know what I'm saying, because you gave so much, you know what I'm saying, so, but then you come back and that same energy is right there waiting for you, and that's what the tribe is feeling, that's what they are communicating to me, that's what, that's what, we, that's what the connection is, it's like, you know, it, it, it's an energy ball, you know, that's growing, so, you know, again, this is just, you know, one example, one great example, man, that I'm so grateful to be able to share, and, uh, you know what I'm saying, just keep vibing, man, keep vibing, and, you know, if you want to know any more about it, man, if you want to, you know what I'm saying, start that vibration, it's not like an overnight thing, man, it's just, you know, keep, keep that vibration, man, because it's so much, it's so much static, you know what I'm saying, sometimes it's hard to, you know, see through all that, man, so just keep vibing with us, man, and, and, and this support that you're giving us is there for you, you know what I'm saying, it's reciprocated, 
for that pure water. But it got to be respectful and it got to be pure water. And, uh, you know, these are easy things. You know what I'm saying? That's the vibration that we're in. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's open. It's pure. It's clear. It's not no question mark. It's clear. You know what it is. You know what I'm saying? The Most High is not an author of confusion. So any confusion, clearly, you know what I'm saying, you know, it's static. You know what I mean? So drop the confusion. You know what I mean? Whatever that's in your life, whatever's static, drop it and start approaching and connecting to your family in pure water. In the vibration of just wanting to see the whole happy, not what can you get out of a situation or what can you or how can this affect you. You know what I'm saying? You get it all, man. Trust me. We get it all. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's if it's you first and, 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 and ego first, then clearly there's going to be a vibration disconnect. You know what I'm saying? But we know when it's tribe first. We know when it's community and, 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 and you know what I'm saying, choosing the greater light, the greater energy, not anything. You know what I'm saying? That's just about you and your lens and perspective. It's We see through each other's eyes. We see through each other's lens, man. So thank y'all, man, for surfing the wave and allowing us to have this opportunity, man, to, you know, truly be a tribe that, you know, looks after each other and can take care of each other. And this is just a building block for all those that, you know what I'm saying, plan on tribing up in the future, man. You know what I'm saying? So keep tribing up. Tribe up with yourself. Tribe up with us. Tribe up with somebody. You know what I'm saying? We're all on the same head, right? So you got a bunch of locks. We're we're one dreadlock, right? So you see just drop nation. We we're talking about we're talking about the whole head, you know what I mean? But we of what you see is one dreadlock. That's just one dreadlock that's forming. Drop nation covers the entire plane. So, you know what I'm saying? To have the drop is what you have, is the image, it's the substance. So it's not about, you know, physically you know what I'm saying, you know, connecting and this and this and this. It's about literally spreading the frequency and connecting to the lock that you are. You know what I'm saying? Tribing up with the folks and the people around you, not being afraid just to connect and, and to feel that energy. That's all we're doing is locking up. You know what I'm saying? Separation is natural. Not one lock can't always connect to that other lock. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes there is a separation and that's cool. Don't 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 let it fuck you up. You know what I mean? Don't let it, you know what I'm saying, mess up your momentum and thinking that it's some type of a distress signal or division. Yes, there's division in every lot, you know what I'm saying? But it comes through the source when it's truly coming to the source. And if it doesn't have a foundation, the lock falls out. So your job is to establish the root and the foundation connected deep to the source, deep to the hawa, to the breath, so that your lock Whatever lock you form, whatever tribe around you, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the frequency that, that's connected to you through, it could be through this and the folks that you meet through surfing the wave here. It could be the folks around you, you know what I'm saying, in your area, whatever the case is. But when you start asking the right questions and you start locking up, then it's all respectful. It's all good, you know what I'm saying? It's like, hey, it's drop nation, man. It's beautiful. We're a nation of water, man. That's drop. We're a nation of water. If you got something against water, then all you're doing is resisting. And the res you know, time of resisting is don't resist the water, don't resist the wave. We are the non-resistant one. We don't resist the wave that we're in. We don't resist the natural separation. We don't resist the source. And if you can respect that, then that's what we can do in a respectable form no matter what we do. No matter what side you're on. You lock up, you tribe up. We're rooting for everyone who locks up and tribes up because we know we're all drop nation. And all you're seeing right now is like us in a bubble, you know, in front of you trying to make it happen and really making it happen. You know what I'm saying? And the creator is showing you that this is real. You know what I mean? So take that same frequency, spread it around you. And I'll praise the creator. You know what I'm saying? It makes sense. You know what I'm saying? You know, all of us lock up. All of us, you know what I'm saying, connect in real time vibration up, you know what I'm saying, tribe up, so, you know, my man Ronald Price, I appreciate you, because you are, you know, <laughs> this is, this is immense for us, man, so we appreciate you, bro, you know what I mean, to know that uh, we got the secure, security, the secure breath, the wall of protection, uh, Larry Lampton, my sister, Miss D in the Copper Color Awakening, Damon Browner, V. Brown, Sherry P. Mitchell, 
Denise Rhodes, you already know, V Perkins, Wilma Bates, and the list goes on, man. Love to everyone dropping in all the PayPal, man, because, you know what I'm saying, we as an infrastructure, we're growing, our frequency of learning, all that, man, and we're, we're you know, obviously acquiring more land, we're doing different things, so we're getting the radio popping, so everything you're dropping on the PayPal, every single, you know, bit of that energy, you know, truly, you know, hits direct somewhere, you know what I'm saying, it, it helps in some capacity, oh man, I need, I need this equipment for this, so I need to do this for this, so, man, keep hitting that up, man, I appreciate y'all, man, I appreciate, uh, Renee, Renee, Kokom, Kokom, you know, who just dropped some drop, man, uh, all the fan that's been, you know, doing the drop tuna package, man, doing the five dollars a month joint, sending your music in, some don't even send their music in. They just support that way. They just say, man, I'm going to sign up for it. And $5 goes towards, you know what I'm saying, sh straight to the drop radio, you know, for the infrastructure. So all those that are just surfing the wave and just, you know, donating $5 a month. Much love to uh, Ash, Ashka, Ashka Bell, Bells D. <laughs> That's the website, Ash, Ashka Bell D dot com. But this, you know, the fam been dropping it. Uh, Amara, Amara, Home Care Incorporated. You know what I'm saying? They're dropping it through, through, through their business. And, you know, these are the uh, $5 a month. You know, so they might be using the songs straight for their business, man. That's beautiful, man. Uh, Antoine Daniels, man. LaShawn Hunter. Jonathan Johnson, man. Just ordered some shirts, man. And he's been, uh, you know, surfing away for a minute, man. Again, subscribe to Jonathan Johnson. Uh, left, left to the whole Johnson family. Uh, Ty Battle, man. What can I say about the Battle family, man? They've been ultra supportive, man, and love to the ba Battle family. You know, making a beautiful pilgrimage right now, and I can't wait to hear and uh, vibrate with y'all, man. Ham's Fine Foods, we're talking about Chris Ham, man. Love to Chris Ham. Been surfing the wave with the drop tuna package from the beginning. Keith Sarton, man. Been surfing the wave. Love to Brother Keith. Uh, Shanette Francis, man, love to Shanette, brother, my sister Shanette Francis, excuse me, and everyone, man, that just signed up, man, for, uh, you know, on the website, subscribe to the website for free, getting your five songs a month, we tune five songs a month, so you get your free songs, if you haven't gotten your link or your music link, just email me, I'll send you your folder, you can start sending your free five songs. Uh, music at 432thedrop.com and we'll get all that going man love to all the, you know, everyone who just signed up on the site man we got about a little over 300 subscribers on the website so that's what we're going to really try to you know push everybody over there because we ain't, we ain't going to be on YouTube forever pretty soon we're going to be coming directly and only out of 432thedrop.com and that's why we're building up the you know whole platform for all of our tribe man that have their own radio stations coming out of the website so we'll all be there so if you're looking for us you'll know when to find us and we have a chat room set up for you nice little environment man and just make it our own little secluded alcove uh jonathan pratter man sean L lemonier katrina taylor travis jordan hassan dp antonio shepherd amir mano bay pat relfer kanisha robinson brant joyce Gene Johnson, L, Tantania, Stu V. Vont, Boreen C, Sebastian, Crystal, Crystal Jane, Joe Eggy, Shauna Willis, Kendall, Kendall Life, Dexter Jenkins, Anthony Connor, Kenya, Kenya H, Cody Rose, Chanel McGriff, Damon Bonner, Kush Yahuda. I like that, man. Kush Yahuda. All right, man. All the uh, folks, man, and many more that just signed up, man. So, y'all hit me up if y'all ain't got your uh, your folder, man. Start hitting me with those five songs a month, man. And start, you know, slowly tuning your joint up. Tuning up your uh, music library, man. Um, I just got a great uh, comment, man. Let me read it right quick, man, from, uh, from one of the fan, man, on the email, man. Who has been really, you know, like, working out and hearing that 432, and he's like, man, I've never felt so, you know what I'm saying, energetic working out before, yet calm, my muscles was calm, 
Even the breathing pattern he said he was using was ah wah. Ah wah. You know, and he incorporated the full breath, man, the ha ah, wah with the four three two. So you know what I'm saying? The bro's gonna be sending me a lot more music. And we're gonna make sure we got all those slaps, man, all them slaps. But I hope you don't mind me sharing this, my brother Jose Hipkiss. Jose Hipkiss, he said, King Drop. I listened to this album in 432. He's talking about the Lupe Fiasco. We did the listening party, man. Y'all go get the drop. Because we dropped a lot of drop in that listening party. Some people might be sleeping on it. But those are the times I go to those, uh, those, those other PDFs. And I just put them on, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you get some drop out of that. I listened to this album, 432, while I was working out. Let me tell you, I have never felt like I have been in touch with my mind and my physical body in this way, especially while working out. But yesterday I felt a difference. I have my own studio, I do studio work, but I'm going to take advantage of the 50 tracks this month and send you some of my tracks so I can have them in that 432. I'll be sending them soon. Thanks again for the positive vibrations you send out. Hawa, breath in, breath out. Breathe in, breathe out. Hawa. Crystallize. That's how you work out. You get that Hawaii, you get that 432. So we always said, why work out to an unhealthy frequency? You ain't going to be eating McDonald's while you work out, but you're hearing your music and it's in 440 hertz, killing your clo cochlea, but you're not conscious of it. So you're just used to doing your thing. You, you know what I'm saying? You're able to do it. But hear your same songs, the same songs you normally like. Send it to us. We'll send, you know, get your own private folder. It's only $5 a month, 50 songs a month. And you can keep updating it, man, and all that, man. You'll have all your work out. Plus, we're going to come with our app, man. So after this site is up, I'll be working on the app. And then, uh, yeah, you have the app. So you don't need, you know, you can have that or you can just have the free app. You know, do it that way, man. There's, there's many ways that we rock this, man. Because um, we want to make sure that you are vibrating up, man. And if you want to support us, you know how to do it, man. We appreciate it. Love to Jose Hipkins, man. Yeah, man, so love to all the Drop Nation VIP, everyone dropping on PayPal, the GoFundMe, man, Drop Nation headed home, you know you got that album right, you know you got that album right, yeah, yeah, all right, go check it out, man, see what all the fuss is about, you know, we try to give you, we try to give you the options, man, you know, I should bump it, y'all want to have a listening party? I want to have a 444, 432 listening party, man. And it's really interesting, man, with the 444. I mean, when you surf the wave, it's like, where do you keep hearing 444 in relationship to frequency? 444. Well, A equals 444 when you keep hearing about this uh, 528 frequency, what they call the love frequency, and then you get the 432, they call that love frequency. So it's like, love, wh which one, which one? So you got a lot of talk between the two, but the interesting thing about the 528 is that it's not A equals 528, it's C equals 528. So they're going off the middle C, and that's kind of the way it's kind of being hidden in a sense, or it's a deceptive thing, because you say, oh, well, 432 versus 528, well, you're in two on two different scales. One is on the A and one's on the C. So you have A equals 432. And then they later, 1953, International Standards Organization and British Standards Institute changed it to 440. So now everything out your radio comes out of a 440 hertz instead of 432 or anything harmonic. The interesting thing about this 444 album that my man Jigga dropped is that A equals 444 when C equals 528. So C equals 528, which they call this other love frequency, or is it? Because on that same scale, C equals 528, A equals 444. Now how close is 444 to 440? It's dangerously close, right? So C equals 528, 
equals A444. And now Jay-Z drops this 444 album, so he's in this other frequency, you know, which is a, com they call a competitive frequency, the 432, so. It's all frequency, man, when you put it together. Now, I'm sure there's some other breakdown of it, but that's just uh, my observation, man. Y'all wanna get it? Y'all wanna get it? Y'all wanna get it? We're gonna read it, man. We're gonna read it for like, you know, calm down, you know what I mean? Kick off your shoes, man. We're gonna put some cedar oil on, man, or something, man. Paco! King's Oil, man. Paco just dropped the King's Oil, man. I think the site is up, man. I don't know, man. I didn't get the word. But, you know, the site might be up. I know, I know Paco's been working on his website. And we'll definitely have it up in the, uh, in the drop shop, man. A few, hopefully by next week, the, the site will be done. And I can move on to getting the app up and keep pushing, you know what I'm saying, the frequency of learning in the classrooms, man. It's, you know, it's a great time, man. It's a harvest season, man. You know, we, we've been building this for years, so now it feels like harvest season. It feels like it's all coming together. The tribe is tribing up. Man, the radio's back, man. Come on. American Holocaust, man. It's where it all began, man. Woo! David Statter. Let's just go. Let's do some belly flopping, man. Again, this is Uno's fault because he mentioned his book. I was about to get some sleep, man, but here we are. Here we are, bro. <laughs> man. All right, some good stuff. I'm just going to go for it. Start right here. Page 200. Pause it. Read it. We do have this up in the drop library. Again, you need the password, man. I'm going to slide you the password, man, but it's going to change. So everyone that signed up, like I said, to, uh, you know what I'm saying, right to the website, that drop VIP, man. Those 333 people signed up. It's crazy, right? You're talking about a 444 album. And I got 333 people signed up on this website. But yo, man, so they're going to be the ones that get the new password. Because right now, it's 1, 2, 3, 4. But it will be changing. All right, so y'all want access to this free resource. You know what I'm saying? We got to keep it hijacked free. So, you know, we're going to keep changing the password so they don't hijack us. Because they, you know, we get all these robots and different things, man, all on the site. So we got to start protecting these pages, beef up our security. You know, the whole hosting thing, man. So, you know, it's our second time around with this website. Second time around with the radio. Both times we got snatched off the air, snatched off off the internet. You know, these people to this day, I still can't tell me what happened. I'm still waiting on the same ticket from when they took down the website. They still, so that's why hosting your own stuff is important. I'm still not there yet, but, you know, that's my next move. But right now, I you know, I'm, I'm doing I'm doing the best I can. Doing the best. So all praise the most high we can rock with this situation. But definitely the situation to come. And if anybody got the job, man, they wanna, you know what I'm saying, give us some advice. You went to the uh you know what I'm saying, you went to uh programming and all that. You know what I'm saying? The vision, the vision we got, man, is having our website up, our own hosting, you know what I'm saying, so we don't have no third party hosting whatsoever and we want to uh you know be able to broadcast directly out of our you know site without using the third party so you know we want to broadcast and have it all self-contained right now we do use third parties and that's what makes us susceptible to hijacks you know them snatching stuff off or they just they'll take off the whole third party man just to get rid of the truth man we had so much drop dropping live 365 that had hundreds of radio shows just went AWOL out of nowhere, man. And I don't know, man. I don't know, man. But we was dropping it, man. Political Mike, man, my big bro. We was dropping it, man. Ra Ra the Great, man. D Will. Silas Nehemiah, man. Man, we was dropping it, man. Every Thursday night for like four or five hours, man. So we, we was talking about a lot of things, man. 
Let's go. Now, Columbus had a hard bargain with his royal patrons. Not only did he demand a substantial share of whatever treasure he might bring back from his journey across the Atlantic horizon, he also required of them, as he noted in the prologue to the journey of his first voyage, that henceforth I call I might call myself Don and be Grand Admiral of the Ocean Sea and Viceroy and Perpetual Governor of all the islands and mainland that I should discover and win. So that I should discover and win. So it's a game, right? Oh, you know, Christopher Columbus discovered America. Now we're straight. Now we can come over here and, you know, escape the black plague, and escape our disease, and come disease up some, some old shit, and then disease the people on purpose. Man, we're going to get it. So now Columbus declares himself Don and Grand Admiral of the Ocean Sea and Viceroy and, per and Perpetual Governor. Y'all got to catch this, man. Perpetual slavery, perpetual governor. Of what? What are you perpetual governor of, Colombo? Christy Ball? Of all the islands and mainland. So we're talking about Haiti, Jamaica, Trinidad. You know what I'm saying? Granada, everything in between. And the mainland, South America. North, anything, he, he he wanted to be perpetual governor, man. The balls of this guy. Forever governor of you because he, he did what? That I should discover and win. So he won you, right? Forever, perpetual slavery, perpetual governor. You see how they both go hand in hand with the Papa Bull, 1452, Doom Diverses. Since he thought he was selling to China and India, listen up. Because we know these are the Indies and the Indias. And they're lying when they say he, he was lost. He knew he was coming to the farthest India. And these are all the Indias. This America included is the farthest or farthest India. And all that drop. All that drop. It's right here. In the Lost Tribes and Promised Land. The farthest India. Let's see if we can belly flop on it. Alright. Page 42. Now we're going to get the fine print. I know that's real small, so I'm going to read it to you. But you got this in the... Both of these books are in your drop library. One, two, three, four... Go check it out, 432thedrop.com. Click on Drop Library or just click the link below and get the drop. Now, I said we are in the furthest Indian. This is what I mean by surfing the wave because, you know, if you want to disagree, you got to disagree with, you know what I'm saying, Ronald Sanders. You got to disagree with Dan Stoddard. You got to disagree with these researchers that we're connecting this drop. Now, you are in India. Now, let's see. This confused geography has ancient and honorable roots. The first verse of the book of Esther describes the realm of the Persian king Azerzes, Azerus, whose palace also was at Susa. We got to dig on this Susa. And extending from India even unto Ethiopia and Greek and Roman authors, there is a similar vagueness. So when you talk India, you talk vagueness. It was a vague distinction of dark-skinned people. That's what we're about to get. So we're in the furthest India. We're in the furthest mythical place of dark people. That's all they're saying. And that's the Americans. So a similar vagueness about a vast region taken in by terms like India and Ethiopia. Ethiopia is another vague terminology. It is not a place. Ethiopia, even in its narrowest sense, comprising a much larger area than present-day Ethiopia, because just south 
of the first cataract of the Nile and, and beginning just south of the first cataract of the Nile and its relationship with the better known Persia in the apocryphal act of St. Thomas something tells me a lot's being hidden around the St. Thomas the apostle moves easily between Persia and India now you've seen the Hyborian war map with Iran or Iranistan connected to South America right now this apostle Thomas is moving easily between Persia and India starting roughly with the 5th century apoph apocryphal writer the pseudo Abdias who described the exploits of the apostle Thomas Bartholomew and Matthew in each of the three Indias. Now you only know about one India, right? That's all you taught. We're talking three Indias, and that's why he's the priest king, Prester John of the three Indias. You're in the furthest one. Let's go. So we got the three Indias. The latter concept, the three Indias, became a standard one in the Middle Ages. This was standard, y'all. It's just crazy to you now, but it was standard in the Middle Ages. One of the three Indias faced Ethiopia, so-called Ethiopia, because they have it in quotes, Ethiopia. So where are these three Indias? And we'll get back to this American Holocaust. One of the three Indias faced Ethiopia. According to pseudo Abdias, the second faced Persia, and the third occupied the ends of the earth. Ah, so does that India today occupy the ends of the earth? And what would be the ends of the earth to them coming from Europe or wherever, you know what I mean? So, these this was the ends of the earth. They, this is beyond the partition. So when he got to this India, he wasn't looking for China. This is China. This is... India. This is what? You what? <laughs> he got the Cuba. He got the Cuba and, and called that um, you know, damn near like a China mainland. Even South America, he, he related to Cathay and the Caithness. Cuba's Cathay. Japongo, he called Japongo or something like that, which sounds like Japan. You know what I mean? So, it sounds like when they say he was lost looking for Asia, Maybe the original Asia is here. If the original Africa is here. Maybe China is here. Maybe Japan is here. Kabango. Let's go. I mean, we're just talking pan, man. Japan. Pan. Pa -pa -pa pan. Panda. Pa -pa panda. All right, so we're talking pan. You know, they used to call it all this pan, right? Let's go. So one India faced Ethiopia, another India faced Persia or Iran, and the third occupied the ends of the earth between the ocean and the realm of darkness. Between the ocean and the realm of darkness? You have any better uh, geographical you know, area you want to focus on for the ends of the earth or the area between the ocean and the, this geographical darkness? This realm of darkness. Now the third, which is the Americas we're proposing, became especially fruitful for the geographical imagination, the region of untold islands. What did Columbus just say? Man, see, this is when you surf in the wave. Man, we can go back and forth. So he made himself Don and Grand Admiral of the ocean sea and viceroy of perpetual governor of all the islands and mainland that I should discover and win. Okay, Colombo. So the third India, the Americas, between the ocean and the realm of darkness, became especially fruitful for the geographical imagination of Columbus. The region of untold islands that he's going to discover and win, right? And be perpetual master over you. In which the plural term Indias, etymologically, one and the same as Indies. So the Indias is the Indies. You keep hearing about the Indies, that's the Indias. And you're in the farthest India. 
according to their geographical, mythological rim of darkness. So this third India or Indies came to rest once and for all. They're also, they're also were less mysterious, more valid definitions of the three Indias among medieval geographers. But for most Europeans, even learned ones, even the ones that went to school and stuff, the term covered a vast and distant region of dark-skinned people. The term three Indias covered a vast and distant region of dark-skinned peoples culminating in a countless array of islands in one direction and in Ethiopia, the biblical Kush in the other. So in both areas, in both directions was the Indians. In both direction was the Ethiopians. And there's another uh, great drop in the library called The Way, which breaks down the two Ethiopias, one of the Orient and one of the West. Lost tries and promised land. All right, feeling me, man? So it says since he thought he was selling to China and India, or did he know he was coming to the farthest India since we got the draft? These were not meager titles, because he wanted to be Don. Were he, were he to succeed in gaining them? For Columbus, like the conquistadors to follow, was driven by various forces in his quest to discover and conquer, but during this era when individualism was sharply ascendant in European culture, few if any motives were more important than what in Spanish is called el afan de honra, an, ex an anxiety, a hunger for glory and for recognition. Because they ain't shit. This is what you do when you got some type of complex. You need recognition. Like they say, Napoleon complex. Somebody might be hella short, and he just wants to be seen and recognized so bad that he's flipping out doing crazy shit. It's like, man, you got a Napoleon complex, man. Because you just want to be recognized so damn bad. Well, they have a Napoleon complex. They, they want to be recognized. They want a tribal creator and not some shady ass, you know what I'm saying, sorcerer or angels that, you know, never keep their deals, never keep their promises. So they want glory and recognition, and that's why they want to discover and win you, win your territory. Perpetual governor, perpetual master. To Columbus, the geniose, geniose, ex-slave trader, and would-be holy crusader, returned to Spain with slaves and with gold and with tales of innumerable heathens waiting to be converted, right? That was your savage play. They had to play you as savages to get the document signed, or else they'll be kind of having, you know, a little bit of feelings like, man, I can't tell them that they're the creators, people. I got to tell them, you know, they're savages. Now, does it mean that there were no savages on this land when we know this was Atlantis and we know some savage shit went down? You know what I mean? But does it mean that they paint the whole picture of a bunch of savages being here for propaganda so that they don't feel bad wiping them out like they're doing some Christian great thing? Well, yeah, I mean, that's why this book is so important, because it says when they rolled up on us, we were wearing white. The Aztecs were on all white, and the streets were so clean, they thought they had a thousand street sweepers a day to keep them that clean. So these people wearing these white robes, walking around to and fro in the marketplaces, and the cleanest streets and most orderly marketplace they ever seen, that's where they're learning about their deodorants and soaps, remember? Same book. So returning to Spain with slaves and with gold and with tales of innumerable heathens waiting to be converted was the surest way to achieve such fame. He wants to be noticed. He wants recognition. Thus, within hours of landfall on the first inhabited island he encountered in the Caribbean, Columbus seized and carried off six native people. He said ought to be good servants and would easily be made Christian. 
because it seemed to me that they belonged to no religion. It seemed to me. Barrett, barest of religion, though, he thought, these very handsome and very well-proportioned people to be, the admiral was concerned they possessed gold. I was attentive and worked hard to know if there was any gold. He wrote during the second day of his visit and saw that some of them wore a little piece hanging from a little like a needle case, which they have in the nose in the nose and by signs I could understand that going to the S or doubling the island to the S there was a king there who had great vessels of it and possessed a lot so doubling the island to the S whatever that means man you know dig on it. this was likely the island of Kapongo or Japan Columbus thought the fabulous place Marco Polo had written about and he set out the next day to find it. So he's looking for Kapongo or Japan and Columbus called Kapongo or related it to Cuba. So it's all that the same thing. You know what I'm saying? When we got it and that uh I'm going to leave the link, man. I'll pull it up. But, you know, Columbus coming to Cuba, and he's calling this Sapongo or Capongo. So all that is there, man. And so the man, and so the man who now could call himself Don moved from island to island, snaring more natives for eventual servitude and grilling them incoherently as to the whereabouts of the great deposits of gold. That's all they wanted. These people had no gold because they had no sun. They had to beg Esteban Nico, the child of the sun, to make the sun come out, what, like once a year? So they knew they weren't rocking with the creator if he cursed them and gave them no sun. No sun, no gold. And he finds you with both sun and gold, and he says, oh, it's clear that they are Indios. They are God's children. They are the creator's see but then he's gonna make you a savage at the same time so check this out so he's looking for the great deposits of gold he thought he understood them to say that on one island the people wore very big bracelets of gold on their legs and arms they didn't in Columbus bitterly but probably correctly noted later that all they said was humbug in order to escape. So they just kind of, you know, gave him a little front street. But he pressed on, always believing that magnificent riches in gold and jewels lay just beyond the next landfall. Now listen up, because remember he was looking for, looking for the Grand Khan, right, in Cuba again. Japongo is Japan, which they're relating to Cuba. Put it together. Columbus continued to think he was quite close to the Asian mainland and that the people of all these islands, this is a quote from Columbus, he said, all these islands are at war with the Grand, with the Grand Khan. Pause it. Read it. All right. So Columbus is saying all these islands are at war. So he he's still saying he's close to the Asian mainland. We know that this is what they're calling Asia. All right. <laughs> this is the Indias. He said, all these islands are at war with the Grand Khan. So which Khan? Is this the Hijack Khan? Is this the Genghis Khan Hijack? He said, all these islands are at war with this Grand Khan. Or is it the Israelite King that's at war? You know what I'm saying? With all these hijacks on the island? Or is it the reverse? That this is Genghis Khan's invasion and his thing that was already going on? 
and they're at war with who they're now calling the Grand Khan, who was hijacking the Khan. Either way, you know what I mean? Let me know. Let me know. So all these islands are at war with the Grand Khan. So he came over here looking for the Khan, and he's saying all these islands are at war with the Khan. And you're wondering why they call you Americans. It's not insignificant when Columbus is looking for the Khan, and you're called Americans. Khan means priest. All right, Grand Khan, priest king. So when they took this title, they took the Khan, they took the priesthood, they took the inheritance. But you are the people of the Khan, of the inheritance. What are the uh, so-called Jewish people, the, the Kohens? They say the Kohen is the priesthood. Well, that's the Khan. The Kohen priesthood is the Khan priesthood. Oh, the Kohen, you know, the Aaron, Kohen, you know, all that. Khan. We're talking Khan. All right. Just like you say, Khan, Khan. All right. Yeah, Khan. Priest, solid, vibration. Yes, I agree in your priestly vibration. Khan, Khan. All right, man, let's go. <laughs> let's get a little bit more of this, man. So all these islands are at war with the Grand Khan, who presumably wanted from them what Columbus wanted. So this Khan wanted from them what Columbus wanted. So he's saying right here that this Khan also wanted the gold, also wanted the land, also wanted to be a perpetual governor, a perpetual master. So he's referring to Zingis Cham or Genghis Khan, who hijacked Prester John, who was Wong Khan, Khan on Khan, more on more, more means great. He's saying this Genghis or Zingis, you know, wants the same thing. He wants to hijack these people like Columbus wants to hijack these people. They want the same from them of what Columbus wanted, their precious metals and the wealth of their forced labor, forced labor, slavery, perpetual slavery. Hearing what he wanted to hear in the words of a people whose language he did not understand, the admiral so-called admiral was the victim of the same psychological illusions one writer has observed that led us to hear sweet melodies in the chime of church bells or to discover in the clouds familiar features or impressive images of fantastic shapes it is clear that columbus had several purposes none especially complex for lusting after the gold of the indies personal wealth and the fame and power of course that is evident in everything he wrote, but there is no reason to believe he was not also sincere in his expressed desire to bring back gold, to bring back to Spain in order to finance the last great crusade that would liberate the souls of all the world's infidels and heathens. So he's trying to finance the last great crusade. Remember Columbus thought he was doing something prophetic to liberate the souls, the Christian souls, the Christos souls, the Zeus souls, Iezus souls, of all the world's infidels and heathens. So they say, yeah, Christ came to free the heathen. Well, that's for them then. That's their freedom. You know, they took their God of war, put them on you. You have one savior, and that's the creator. You break that bond, you lose your land, you lose your trees, your frequency. Now, someone comes with their God because they're infidels and admitted heathens, and they say, well, this God's going to free us. The infidels and heathens who were willing to convert while on the same time crushing the bodies of those unwilling to cooperate. A band of warriors, right? A Christian band of warriors to crush the bodies who aren't going to operate. That's convert or die. That's the OG convert or die. And of course, there was the matter of financing the next transatlantic excursions as Leonardo Olechi 
rightly puts it, gold represented the only profit immediately realized of such costly enterprises and pro provided the most direct means of financing the oceanic expedition in the critical epoch of Spain's economic life. We got a belly fly, you know what I'm saying? Got about 10 minutes, maybe. We maybe got 10. We maybe got 10. Stuff. All right, so let's jump right here, man. Page 207. Get this paragraph right here. Pause every day. Wah, wah, wah. Let's go. In the preceding chapter, we noted that race is an ancient Western concept and that skin color has long been one of the many characteristics with which it has been associated. It is significant, writes David Brian Davis. For example, that the during the 13th century, we're talking the 1200s, listen up, slave trade, Sicilian officials qualified the general designation for more or Saracen with the Latin terms for white, solo, and black. So a moor was called white, a moor was called black, or solo, or Saracen. All loose titles, all adjectives, right? More, Saracen, white, solo, black. All adjectives that do not describe a person, a place, or a thing. So what tribe are you from and who are you? What's your seed? As Elena Lore, also, also writing of the 13th century, 1200s. Only with great difficulty and after he had already been sold as a Muslim slave, did a very black man with thick features prove to the authorities that he was, in fact, a good Catholic? I don't know. What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> that he was already hijacked? For most of the duration of this idea's existence, however, race was not seen as an Im immutable phenomenon. Skin color, for instance, commonly was viewed as an environmental change environmentally changeable and as we have seen even semi-human monstros monstrosities so what's a semi-human monstrosity i don't know but we're talking about the 1200s and we're talking about europe such as a dog-headed beast who became saint christopher all right so now we're getting into some other shit i know so we're talking about let's back it up We have seen even semi-human monstrosities. This is the 1200 talking about Europe. Semi-human, so they're not human, and they're monsters, such as a dog-headed beast who became Saint Christopher. Christopher, like Christy Ball Columbus, are they saying that in his right form, in his sorceress form, he's a dog-headed beast and he became Saint Christopher? listen up, were susceptible to favorable transformation. So this human, semi-human monstrosity, such as a dog-headed beast who became Christy Ball Columbus, were susceptible to favorable transformations. Are we saying these niggas were shape-shifting and transforming into a, a form that we can deal with, but their true form is what dog headed and semi human. I'm just reading, man. I'm just reading with you. All right, so dog headed beasts who became Saint Christopher were susceptible to favorable transformations such as permutability of human existence. That means, and my brother Uno looked it up, man, means like, you know, they're able to, you know what I'm saying, you know basically transform, you know, switch out, change of human essence. So such permi permutability or transformation of human essence, what's human essence? It's spirit, it's that Ruach. So they can transform their essence or they can transform, it's pretty much saying they were shape-shifting. That these folks was coming over here in human form, but were not human form, they were semi-human form. 
and they had permutability or this transformation of their human essence was thoroughly compatible during Christianity's reign in Europe. This is compatible with what they were doing in Europe. Semi-human dog-headed beast with the church's fervent crusade to bring all the world's people under its heavenly wing, hijack wing. However, a little more than a century later, Columbus put to sea on his journey that would shake the world. Cracks began to appear in the edifice of Christianity's racial e esumenism, esumenism. The cause of the problem was slavery. Now we're going to do our dismount here, man. We're going to do our dismount here. Pause it, read it, man. 227, let's go. Let's do our dismount, man. Hope y'all can see that. I know it's a little small. So just pause it, read it for yourself. Pull it up. Let's go. Actually, let's jump to 228. So, it is therefore far from surprising to find 16th century English sea captains, adventurers, and soldiers of fortune all of whom have heard most negative Spanish descriptions of the native people of the New World, solemnly performing inspections of captured Indians to see if they had cloven feet or other marks of the devil. <laughs> to some Englishmen, there were also remain for a time the possibility that the New World natives were of some sort of golden age ancestry. Again, for a time, the possibility to some Englishmen that the New World natives were of some sort of golden age ancestry, not golden age, but golden people. One of the famine, you know, broke down how they translated age wrong, and it's not golden age, it's the golden race or golden tribe or golden people, the people of this gold. We have gold in our blood. We're surrounded by gold. We are the gold. We are the copper. We are the minerals. So this is not just a golden age, but a time of golden people to raise back up. So he said these people, these, these natives, <laughs> were of golden age ancestry. Both these expectations can be found in the earliest writings of the British in America. Thus, for example, Arthur Barlow after landing in Virginia, Virgin Land, Virginia, in 1584 and taking possession of the land in the right of the Queen's Most Excellent Majesty. So he came and he took possession of Virginia in the name of the Queen, under Her Highness and Great Seal, recalled that upon entering the Indians, or excuse me, upon in encountering the Indians, we were entertained with all love and kindness and with as much bounty after their manner as they could possibly devise, we found the people most gentle, loving, and faithful, void of all guile or guile and treason, and such as lived after the manner of the golden age. He said, you so-called Negroes lived after the manner of the golden age, literally in a whole other frequency of the love and kindness that you were sharing. A more kind and loving people there cannot be found in the world as far as we have hitherto had trial. So they cannot find, find a more peaceful, loving, kind people. A more kind and loving people there cannot be found in the world as far as we have traveled. We found the people most gentle, loving, and faithful, void of all guilt and treason, and such as lived after the manner of the golden age. And here is describing John Hingam recently has demonstrated artistic conventions of the time personify each of the world's continents as female. So on these maps, they're showing. Each, 
each continent is personified as a female. All right, so they're drawing them out as a female. Now listen up, but in distinct and individuality, individually stereotyped ways. So to differentiate America from Africa and Asia, the artist relied chiefly on her partial or complete nudity. <laughs> this is how they thought of you, man. Your land as females and, 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 and harlots, man. They made a harlot out of your land. They divided your lot. Asia was fully clothed, was always fully clothed. So Asia was always fully clothed as a female, often sumptuously so. All right, so still, still a harlot. <laughs> Africa attired in sometimes revealing but always an elegant dress. So Africa had an elegant dress but still revealing, still a harlot, was supposed to look Moorish <laughs> since Europeans were most familiar with the Mediterranean littoral. America alone was a savage. Now, how is America alone depicted as a savage? So this female essence that they were giving to these continents, the only one that was a straight-up savage that they tried to make a depiction of in Europe was right here in America. Yet, they're saying, or yet, author Barlow is saying in 1584 in Virginia, we found the people most gentle, loving, and faithful, void of all guilt, all guilt and treason and such as lived after the manner of a golden age, the golden age, a more kind and loving people there could not be found in the world as far as we have hither had traveled. As far as they've gone, anything they've seen, they've never seen nothing more pure water than you. Now as we you know, come back to our vibration, this is what we remember, that that's our essence. Don't let nobody change you. You're the crystal. You crystallize them. Don't let them change you. You rock it and you be who you are and you let that vibration flow. You ride with it. You die with it, man. Dr